Hey, what's up everyone? Let's go on to do Mantis Claw. Everyone's favorite split. So now we have Dash. This is a movement heavy split. So we're going to be focusing on a bit on the intricacies of movement. So as soon as you get off this bench, start dashing. Then you want to dash to the left and menu drop as soon as you can. Then you want to close the menu drop as soon as you clear this ledge and dash right. Like so. As soon as you land, do a little mini hop. Then we go over here. So what I always do is I hold left and then I jump and uh, dash so that you build up more fall speed before you get to this point. So jump and dash, you fall really quickly down here and you can dash again, dash again. Jump. Uh, that's not supposed to happen <laughs> by the way, but anyway, you just, uh, let me actually, it is probably important that I show this a little bit so let me let me show you this room so you can go like this you can go like that or you can go like that and it's about the same uh, frame wise so this spot is a bit important so you want to when you go into this room don't hold any direction just dash and buffer a jump okay like that Okay, this is how you do the room optimally. <clears throat> now let me explain each part. So, no direction, jump, buffer a jump. Sorry, dash, then buffer a jump. <laughs> so as soon as you enter the room, hold no direction, dash, buffer jump, then hold left the whole time. Then this menu drop is actually pretty precise. You're just gonna have to get a feel for this over time. If you land here, you lose a lot of time. If you land here, you don't lose a lot of time, but you can back it up like that. So you wanna just get in between these two parts, then you drop and pogo that and land in here. The reason why we go for this statue pogo is so that we can start holding right and we're landing from far enough up that we're gonna get a hard fall if we don't pogo that. So we want to pogo that to dodge the hard fall. We don't want to just land all the way down here with our inventory open because we're with our inventory open and we could be holding right, but we're not. So pogoing the statues faster, you don't have to do it. It's just a minor, minor time save. Then you dash into this transition. <clears throat> okay, so this is a big room. Let me show you. You just want to walk off this ledge and menu drop just a moment after you get past the ledge, okay? Now, if you hold the inventory for too long, you fall into the acid like that. And that's a huge time loss. So you dash and you want to menu drop down here. Then you just walk off. Now, the timing on this dash is actually kind of precise. So you want to hold left and dash. Oops. This is a little bit tricky, so hold left and dash. This is what I always do, and this is the fastest way to do it. So you get through here without landing. Let me show you. You don't land until you reach this spot. Then you you use this spot to refresh your dash by landing, then you dash, dash. There is like a little ceiling boost thing that you can do here. You touch the ceiling and it sends you down like that to the ground faster doesn't really save much time don't bother and if you if you hit the ledge then you're just losing time so so the thing is you do this la dash super late otherwise you're going to land somewhere like if you go like this you're gonna land like here you don't want that so we do this dash very late so we can clear this platform down here and uh, this is the platform I'm talking about so do this dash late enough, we clear this platform, then we go right. <clears throat> now sometimes you'll do this dash way too late. You see there's no dust here, okay? Whenever you are grounded and you do a dash, there's that dust. Let me, let me, let me show you the dust animation. See right here? But you, you don't get that otherwise. Right here. 
So take a look for that, and if you are too late, then, um... Let, let me show you what happens if you're too late. Try to go for this, and you try to dash at this point, and you just fall into the acid. Okay, so go like that. And yeah, there we go. That's how you do the room optimally. You don't have to do it like that, it just saves a little bit of time. Um, okay, so this is... Going the bottom route in this room saves point two. You can go top route if you like the mushroom guys, but... I just go like this, and jump. You can take it pretty safely, it's not gonna lose you much time. So here we go, like so. And this movement is actually a little bit uh, noteworthy. So we pogo this guy to get soul, and it puts us in the perfect spot to fall straight down like this. And because our our fall is not getting, a lot of people used to like land here and then land here and then that's kind of slow. So don't bother with that. You can also go like this, but uh, the fact that your fall is getting broken by this platform, by this ledge right here, it's just gonna lose a bit of time, so don't go for that. Let me just heal up for a moment. And check that my HP is infinite. It is. So we go like this, and then we dash at the top apex of our pogo. And then we go to the left, and we, we always try to clear this platform. If you land here, you're losing time, so just be careful. In this room, you can just hold left and dash, and you'll always clear... You'll always clear this gap if you dash with the right timing. You might want to stop here just so you avoid falling in. That's okay. So in this room, just hold left and dash twice. Then pogo dash, pogo dash, pogo dash, pogo dash, pogo dash. The only real consideration is don't pogo dash too high or this happens. So you want to make sure you're kind of low when you do this last pogo dash. Like so. Okay, that's the only major consideration. Once you get to this point, you do a mini hop, then you dash right under the ceiling right here. Then you want to delay your rightwards movement so that you fall to the left of this. And then you, as soon as you get to this center part of this, you see the center little circle thing, you menu drop here, okay? And once you get here, hold left, and then dash, jump, jump, then go into the transition. So let me show you that once more. From here. The reason I do those jumps is just it gives me the perfect timing to fall into the transition. And I, I kind of messed it up there, but you get the point. Anyway, this part is pretty straightforward. You jump here, then you... Okay, that's a lot at once, so I'm gonna break it down a little bit. So we go here, pogo dash, and then we need to clear this ledge so that we don't land on it and lose... We don't break our fall. Then we walk off this platform and menu drop. Then as soon as we get below this guy, dash and up slash him. Okay, so let me show, show you this. We'll just do it all at once and then we'll get to Explosion Pogo again. Again? Is this, this, this is the first time. Anyway, I missed the slash, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna start from up here because this is where we start from normally. Okay, this is the normal setup. Um... This is the normal setup. <laughs> okay. And that's the idea behind Explosion Pogo. So let me break it down, okay? You dash under him. So the way we set it up, we want it to be consistent movement every time leading up to the Pogo itself. Okay, so we want to move the same way every time. That means that the Spore will follow us in the same way every time. So we can look at the spore for a visual cue of when to jump, okay? So as soon as we dash under him, we hit him, then we fall. As soon as we 
land, we dash into this wall, and we just let go of the controller until we see that the spore is at a certain spot, okay? Hold down, that's all I do. At this point, okay, you see the background? Uh, there's these little lines up here, right here. As soon as it reaches this line right here, that's when I jump. Okay. Let me just show you that. And one more time. So let's break down the movements of the pogo itself. So I hold down just because you're going to be holding down the whole time. So you might as well start holding down so that you don't like let go of it. I don't know why, it's just easier for me. <laughs> so I start by holding down and then I get to this point. I, as soon as I pogo, I start holding left. And after I've held left, I get to this point. This little part is the part you want to clear. And then you do your second pogo once you're here. Okay, and that's the pogo on the explosion. So I so I jump, I pogo and hold left at the same time, and then I get to this point, I let go of left, and then I pogo again, and then I hold left again and dash once I get up here. Okay? Let me show you this once more. Hold left, or hold down, sorry. Let me show you it one more time. Okay, and that's all there is to the basic Explosion Pogo setup because there are numerous setups. So let's get into them. So this is the other setup. You do the dash into the wall like normal, but you hold left and you stand about here. Okay, now okay, bounced against the wall. You want to stand in between these two mushrooms. It's been a while since I've done this, so maybe you want to stand about here. But the point is, you'll you'll, you'll see what the point is in a second. <laughs> stand in between the two mushrooms. Then as it gets down here, you walk left. And you pogo it twice without holding left. This one's a bit easier, but it is the slowest way to do it. Which is not a big deal if you're a beginner. Okay. And let's work out some visual cues, because working out visual cues is an important speedrunning skill. So as soon as it gets to this point, I'm going to try holding left. Just to walk to the left a bit. And that seems to be a good visual cue, so that's what I'm going to do. So stand in between these two mushrooms. As soon as, it, as, soon as the spore gets to this point, I'm going to walk left to this mushroom, just so I'm to the left of the explosion and I don't get hit by it. And then I'm going to jump immediately. And you can see I jumped a bit too early, so I'm going to delay my jump slightly. Okay. And with this method, it's a little bit slower because you're pogoing it a bit later, but you don't have to worry about when to hold left. Okay. Now let me show you damage tank explosion pogo for beginners. Okay. Um, that was a bit too effective. Okay, now I'm gonna try it a bit to the left, but the idea here is that you get knocked back a bit by the explosion. And it's really lenient. So you can try this method. You take damage, but it's actually very lenient in terms of getting the skip because you get two pogos and you get knocked back into the air. So if you get consistent with this, you'll get it 100% of the time. So I'm going to do it like this. And it's it's really, really easy to do it that way. As long as you're confident with taking a bit of damage, that's, in my opinion, it's the easiest way to do it. And I just use this as a visual cue. Once it gets to this point. And you can hold in when you get hit by the explosion as the game freezes so that you move back towards it and you can pogo it a second time afterwards. 
The thing is, you're luring the spore so far to the left that you don't have to worry about this so much. Damage tank explosion pogo is the easiest as far as I'm concerned, but you know, you just have to be confident in your mantis pogo after this so that you can do it without taking damage. And keep in mind you can do the second pogo super late because you're pogoing the explosion, right? Okay, and I'm jumping a little bit late or early there, but you know, you can work out these visual cues yourself. There's so many different ways to do this. And that's probably the easiest one. Now I'm going to show you the more advanced method, which is my damage tank explosion pogo. And it, it's, you know, it's advanced, so <laughs> I mess it up sometimes. Okay, that's about the fastest way you can do it. There is another way, I'm not even going to get into it because it's so hard. Um, but that's, that's the basic idea, is you land here, dash, dash, as soon as you touch the ground, you dash to the right, then you jump and go for the pogo. And then, as you go for the, after you go for the pogo, you pogo left, and dash, and you turn around and hit it. And you can see I did it a bit too low to the ground, but that's the basic idea. Um, you don't, I don't recommend this one for beginners, or... Probably anyone, but I do it because it's cool. So once you get into here, I always like to jump up to here, jump dash. And then once you get here, you can mini drop. Um, you want to dash and then mini hop into this transition. Now this room. Okay, so as soon as you land here, you want to mini hop. I'm just going to show you it once. Okay, that is the normal strat for Mantis Pogo. Uh, that's the one I recommend the most. So, let me show you it one more time. Okay. And this is the strat that Axe found. So, you want to mini hop here. Dash as soon as you clear this uh, little ledge here. Then, you walk in between the window and this wall. Once you get to the middle here, you fireball, and then you dash into it as soon as you can, and you up slash. Then you do a mini hop, and you left slash this lever, and you r dash to the right as soon as you're done uh, hitting the lever, and just like that. Those mantises are going to be in the perfect spot every time. So that's the strat that I'd recommend learning. There's also three mantis, which is like this. And you can see there's so many mantises that it's a bit easier, but you lose time. And the thing is, is that there's so much more movement that you kind of have to improvise. Because the fact that you're in there for longer and you're moving more, it just means there's more opportunity for the mantises to move around randomly. Which means you have to improvise a little bit when doing three mantis. You might be more comfortable with that. I kind of recommend everyone just learn this one. It's really consistent. Now, that guy attacked early. You notice, you can see how early he was about to attack. When that happens, if you try to do the normal jumping up here and pogoing, as you pogo when you're up here, he will attack. And that moves his hitbox away, so you try to pogo, and the pogo just whiffs because he attacks and his hitbox moves away from you while he does that. So when that happens, you just let him, you just let him attack and you stay on the right side of him so that you get knocked back over here above the other mantis. And then you pogo the other mantis three times and you just, often you'll land to the right, sometimes you can go to the left, it's just up to you. It's faster to go left, obviously. But that's the backup for this strat. Sometimes that mantis just attacks early, you just have to react to it. There it is again. And that's the backup. Okay, let me show you three mantis one more time. Mm 
you can see there's a lot more leniency, but you also it's way slower and you also have to improvise a bit more. But yeah, that is the Mantis Claw split, so you just mash to get through here. Mash, pause. And then we're back in the main menu. So normally you just mash A, but debug menu messes up the menus a bit, so... Yeah, now we're in the Grossmother split. So thank you guys for watching, and check out the next video.